saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground.
That was powerful. Put your hands together one more time for the fruits. Can we take an offering? Is it a good idea to take an offering? I didn't hear you. Is it a good idea to take an offering? As I was saying by you, did you come to God empty or you came with some heavy, heavy something? Ask him, ask him. Pastor Eric, ask. Pastor, so when I say ask, you don't ask. Okay. Powerful. All right. Okay, take that heavy offering. Okay, since you need ask, now take. All right, take out a good, good offering for the Lord. Sitting outside, take a bigger offering because the air is fresher outside. Right, right. Have you taken out your offering? I guess I do have an offering. Powerful. All right. Lift your hands up. It's only up to the first Sunday. Like the back, all the back, no hand is up. But let it go above your head. So that you don't forget and put it back in your pocket. Father, we want to thank you tonight for the blessing and privilege of giving. We are grateful for your provision and for what you do in our lives and for all the manifold blessings. We give because we love you. We love you because you first loved us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. All right, Ashes, please receive the offering. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, then where we lie unto them that dreamed then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with joy then said they The Lord has done great things for them. Yeah, the Lord has done great things for us. And there we the weary joys turn again. Ah. Uh... 
Hallelujah. Let us pray. Just thank God for tonight. Thank Him for the opportunity that you have to come into His presence. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for what a chance. Oh, hallelujah. 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 What a great blessing it is, Lord, to be in your presence. In Jesus' name. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for this great opportunity at this Easter time to serve you, to worship you, to thank you. Give us grace and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in church? Very good. Turn with me to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. And I shall be reading from chapter 1. At this Passover convention, remember to, tomorrow is Good Friday. And uh, our service begins at 3 p.m. And also, um, we'll start at 3, so that by 6, hopefully. And we are still fasting. Amen. How many have enjoyed the 21-day fast? I hear weekends are now half days. All right. So I think tomorrow is somehow like the last day. Our day. But still, as long as our senior cathedral pastor has imposed that fast on Saturday and Sunday, it applies unless the sanctions are lifted tomorrow. Are you there? It has been a powerful time. Amen. And I think that we need more fastings. I was telling you yesterday that the Bible school are going to embark on about three 21-day fastings in a year and two 40-day fasts all in a year. Huh? And as for the seven days and the five days fasting, there will be more. Hallelujah. It is a good thing. You see, a time will come when um, a time will come when uh, what do you call it? You can't do certain things. Not, not that you are backslidden. But even you wouldn't be expected to do those things by the Lord. So, when you have the strength, amen, amen. you need to um, I see a lot of people standing out. It's disturbing me. Randy, can you? Walking around and so on. So, please. Um, what was I saying? Huh? Yeah, there will be a time. It's not that you are backslidden, but you can't. Do you get it? So, if you are in your 20s, or your teens, or your twenties, or your thirties, and forties in a way. Yes. You must be ready to move into realms. And even your fifties. Yeah. So, um, be ready to be doing more fasting. Are you ready for that? Yes. You see, there is so much carnality in the church. Even the fastings and prayers are for things. Yeah, 
fasting and prayer to get things. It's a reflection of the type of people that we have become. You get it? You get it? So we need the type of fastings and prayer that are just without any topic. Just there. Flowing in fastings and in the presence of the Lord. Without any particular topic. Because if you want the topic, thy will be done can go for more than 80 hours. Thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done daily. That's the prayer that Jesus prayed for three hours. You get it? So that is the Gethsemane prayer. And it's a prayer that works all the time. You don't need to be at the beginning of the year to be praying not to die. You can pray in the middle of the year, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Amen. Amen. And if you pray thy will be done, you must have faith in God. Faith even to die. Oh yes. If you are going to die, you must be happy. Well, the Bible says to live is Christ, but to die is gain. So Christians are supposed to be happy that they are going to die. And they are supposed to die well. Not fighting. But embracing. And running towards it. And say, oh, what I've been waiting for. I go bounding like a schoolboy who has been released from boarding school and is coming home to eat. Are you listening to me? So today I have a very, very special message that I believe is from the Lord. On the first day, I shared with you that we have been where we are long enough. Amen. Amen. And God is telling us that we have been at all the different levels we are at long enough. And he wants to take us to the next level. For every new thing that God is doing, you are going to have to have some faith. There's going to have to be some risk. When there's no risk, there's no faith. It takes... um, your friend is saying, faith or risk. Huh? Didier. Didier. Is it not to eat? Ah, Didier. Ah, Didier. I thought about Didier. GD. Uh-huh. Take GD. Ah, GD. Take and eat. Okay. <laughs> That's what it means. And that is what it means to believe. Huh? G D E. All right. Hemo <laughs> Kayeli. Huh? Take and eat. Hemo Kayeli. All right. Now, are you there? You must have faith for the next level. Every level takes some faith. But I want to tell you something. Usually it's not much faith. God is not wicked that when he's going to test your faith, or give you a chance to move forward. He'll give you something so wild that, I mean, it's beyond your ability. Usually it's something small, but still there'll be some amount of risk. When I was coming to be full-time, or even before full-time, to be a pastor, we had to stand and say we are starting a church. Okay? Are you there? And whether people would come or not, or whether it would work or not, we've done it. So that's faith, and there was risk. 
when I was coming into full-time ministry, there was still some faith because I just had a classroom full of de- uh, laboratory students, x-ray students, and just one or two, m- only medical students, maybe Hamish. Pastor Hamish. I mean, the medical students were not in the church at that time. You get it. So there was faith. And you are leaving everything to lead these people to where? So there was faith. When I was beginning the National Association of Charismatic Churches, NAC, which today is one of the recognized associations in the country, um, I had to have faith because I didn't know whether anybody would join. You get it? Yeah. So, brothers, any new level that you are going to go to, you're going to have to risk something. Are you there? So, if you are going to move to the next level of giving, huh, you're going to have to risk and start giving higher for some time and, and leave it to God. And let's see whether he is capable. Are you there? Do you understand my message? Is my message simple enough? Yes. So all of you who are in the five thousands, listen, believe God. You see, and I, I particularly remember when the Lord told me, anybody who comes to preach here, I should not give him less than a certain amount of money as a honorarium. Because I was doing something far less. And the Lord said, do that. It's a new level to honor the servants of God. Amen. Amen. So, brothers, you have been where you are long enough. Now, when I was coming to preach, I saw gold being um, showered on you. So, I told you, listen, no, no, no. It's not because you are righteous that the Lord is going to do it. Not because you are good. Uh, or because we are righteous. It's because of his covenant and his decision. Amen. Amen. As I told you, me normally I wouldn't preach that much unless I believe the Lord really wanted me to do. And I, I feel so. And I, and just as I was preaching again just now, I, I saw it again, and that's what even made me mention it. So receive it in Jesus' name. Don't be left out of God's blessings. But don't forget, it's not because you are good. It's because of His covenant. Yesterday, I shared with you. That the Lord make you a thousand times more than you are. Already you are like the stars of heaven. It is difficult to imagine it. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it's difficult. But I remember, I remember in my life, when I was preaching and I was explaining to the congregation my faith that one day, Our church will have a cordless microphone. I preach and I say one day we'll have a cordless microphone. And it's happened. I have a cordless microphone. Amen. Is it not a powerful thing? At that time, I remember we had a church member who was a sort of one of these wealthy church members. And this particular member was supposed to buy a cordless microphone for us. As a spe- I mean, it was a special, I mean, a special thing that God was going to raise her up to do in the house of God. No, don't, don't joke. I'm talking about our lives. Yeah. You can ask Reverend Saki. We are talking about what affected us. It sounds funny to you, but because today it doesn't look like that. But you can ask Reverend Saki. We prayed about this cordless mic. <laughs> and surprisingly, this person 
who was to buy this cordless mic, suddenly became bored with us. Yes. And decided not to get the cordless microphone for us again. Oh! Our hearts were broken. It was a siniazo. We, we, we sat together and we reflected by the rivers of Babylon. We were thinking. When we sat down, where we wept, when we remembered how close we were to a cordless microphone. Huh? We saw others who had cordless microphone, but we didn't have one. So when the Lord is telling somebody that may the Lord make you a thousand times more because today I can get hundred people right now to buy me a cordless microphone just do now come but at that time it was something we sat down. there. We sat down by the rivers of Babylon and we wept. When we remembered how close we were to a cordless microphone. But you see, when he says, may the Lord make you a thousand times more. It's a real thing. And yesterday, I believe that the Lord imparted to us that spirit of a thousand times more. Hallelujah. How many believe that with me? Now tonight, for just a short while, I want to share with you a very simple message. I hope it is simple for you to understand. And it is entitled, We Can Do Nothing Against the Truth. We can do nothing against the truth. Amen. Amen. Still, it will be from Deuteronomy. Hmm? But you need to see that scripture in 2 Coronto, chapter 13. 2 Corinthians. And I want you to underline it in thy Biblia. All right? Underline it in thy Biblia. Are you there? We've almost finished the message already. Are you ready to share the grace? Notice. For we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. Amen. Amen. We can do nothing what? Against the truth, but only for the truth. It means only in favor of the truth. Only that which will make the truth go further. Yeah. But we, we, we cannot do anything in this world against the truth. But only for the truth. One day I saw a newspaper. They had uh, put that, uh, this scripture. They put it on their front page. They were lambasting somebody and then they used this scripture and they said we cannot do anything against the truth but only for the truth. Alright? Now turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Back to Deuteronomy. Amen. Are you there? Verse 6. 
Deuteronomy, verse 6. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorites. All right? Verse 8. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Amen. Verse 9. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. Amen. Amen. For the Lord hath multiplied you, and behold, you are this day as the stars of the heaven for multitude. And the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times more. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, verse 12. How can I alone bear the load and burden of you and your strife? Choose wise and discerning and experienced men from your tribes, and I will appoint them as your heads. And you answered me and said, The thing which you have said to do is good. So I took the heads of your tribes, wise and experienced men, and appointed them heads over you, leaders of thousands and of hundreds and of fifties and tens and officers for your tribes. Then I charged your judges at that time saying, hear the cases between your fellow countrymen and judge righteously between a man and his fellow countryman or the alien who is with him. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small and the great alike. Amen. For judgment is God's. And the case that is too hard for you, you shall bring to me and I will hear it. Moses was just going through all the things he had told them. All right. Now, I commanded you at that time all the things that you should do. Then we set out from Horeb, verse 19, and went through all that great and terrible wilderness which you saw on the way to the hill country of the Amorites. As the Lord our God had commanded us, and we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said to you, you have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is about to give us. See, the Lord has placed the land before you. Go in, take possession as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you, do not be afraid or dismayed. Amen. Amen. The Lord is telling us we should not be afraid. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go forward with strength. Amen. Don't be afraid, brother. Don't be afraid, sister. It is well with you. Amen. I said it is well with you. Amen. You see, what you don't know is the brother who was dancing by you has more problems than you. Yeah. No, I want to tell you, you didn't know. How many didn't know that the guy sitting by you has more problems than you? How many didn't know that? Raise up your hand outside. The guy who was jumping by you has more problems than your problems, I'm telling you. But he was still jumping. So don't be discouraged, sister. You are going to make it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, where were we? Which verse? 21. See, the Lord has placed the land before you. Go up, take possession. As the Lord, the God of your fathers, has spoken to you. Do not be afraid. Okay? Now, as we move into our new church building in Kaneshi, every time you step there, you must tell yourself, Lord, you have given me a new level. Because, because the church is not me. My name is not on the church. My name is not the church. The church does not belong to me. I, I have written my will already. My will that should be read when I am dead. I've written it already. And the things in my will does not include the church. Neither does it include anything that belongs to the church. Because the church things are not my things. I just work in the church. Amen. Amen. I have not written that the church should be given to this person. I do not have 
or I, I, I can, if I want to have that, or I can appoint and say, this person should be the one in charge of the church when I'm not there. But the, the properties and the money of the church is not my money. When you give an offering to the church, it is not for me. Are you understanding what I'm saying? When you give an offering to the church, it's not shared. We don't share it. You get it? You get it? Yeah. So as you enter the church, it's your church. Eh? And right now, I want you to have a picture in your eyes. Front of your eyes. Uh, something new that you are going into. But you see, it is symbolic. Rejoiner said something. He said all the miracles that Jesus did were prophetic. They had meanings. And you see, it is simpletons. Do you know what a simpleton is? It is simpletons who, simpletons are very simple people. Da, 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 da. They, they don't know what is happening. You get it? Now, a simpleton is somebody, you know, simpletons in the church do not recognize what is happening. Like, like I'm trying to explain to you, Jesus died when the Passover lambs were being cruci- uh, k- killed in their houses. He was a common, like a common thief being killed also at the same time. He rose from the dead, exactly as predicted. And he sent the Holy Spirit exactly for the Feast of Pentecost at the same time. That's what the Bible said, when the Feast of Pentecost was fully come. So the Christian calendar follows the Jewish prophetic calendar. And they, they can't even recognize it. But I think they are recognizing it now. Because the other day I was with, talking with a Jew. And he took me to his library. And showed me so many books. And, and he was saying that he has Jewish friends who have been converted to Jesus Christ. And, you know, it's something that it occurs to him. That Jesus was the Messiah. But only that he has not converted yet. Are you there? Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Where were we? So, I'm trying to say that going away from this place, it's not just, I mean, I mean, the church has built a new place and we are, no, 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 no. Don't be a what? Simpleton. Don't be a simple, ask the person next to you, Ofane, simpleton, Jibo. It means, are you a simpleton? Hallelujah. How many are getting ready for something new? I wouldn't be surprised if I build a new house. Yeah, because I've noticed that as I build God's house, God builds houses for me. So I wouldn't be surprised. Although it's not in my plan. I don't have any such plan. But I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah? And you see, I wouldn't be surprised if you have a new house. Yeah. Because the church is for you as much as it is for me. Because in your will, you have not included a church. Is that not so? And in my will, I have not included a church. Is that not so? So who is the church for? The church is for all of us. We are all in the church. That doesn't mean that you can come after and say, I have put my offer in the church, so I'm demanding that this place should be painted red. We, 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 we can't. We, we don't do things that way. When I say the church is for you, it doesn't mean that you come around and start saying things that are not, I mean, your job. Are you there? All right? How many are ready for, we cannot do anything against the truth? Huh? All right. Now listen, verse 21. The Lord said, go and take possession. Then all of you approached me and said, let us send men before us that they may search out the land for us and bring back to us the word of the way by which we should go up and the cities which we shall enter. And the thing pleased me. So I took 12 of your men, one man for each tribe. And they turned and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eskol. 
And then they took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down to us. And they brought us back a report and said, It is a good land which the Lord our God is about to give us. Mm? Are you there? Okay. Now look at verse 26. Notwithstanding, you would not go up, but you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord. And you murmured in your tents. In your where? And said, because the Lord hated us. Hmm? He has brought us forth out of the land of Egypt. Are you there? To deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Hey! We cannot do anything against the truth. Now, right here, blessings and prosperity and so many things were getting spoiled by discussions in the tents. Not even in the church. What you say in the tent. And I'm going to show you how God responded to what they said in the tent. When I read it, I became scared because I realized that God listens to every conversation that we have. Moses was not in everybody's tent, but he was telling them, you grumbled in your tents. Today is a day of repenting from certain things you have said in your tents. How many have said some things in your tent that you shouldn't have said in your tent? No, I'm not saying that you should raise your hand. I'm talking about, okay, put out your hand. How many can remember some specific things that you have said in the tent that you shouldn't have said? Raise your hand. Oh, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Think about it, too. Because when you repent, you know, a lady was quarreling with her husband. I went to some political meeting the other day, and then uh, the guy was explaining. He said that his wife, he was explaining his wife, and he took his wife, they went for the council of elders meeting, and the family people were there and so on. So they talked, uh, and then it was time, they said she should go and apologize. So she went around all the elders. Then when she said, and the guy said, when she got to my turn, Eh? This meeting was about these walls in those days. He said, when they got to my tear, she helped John and she said, Mina can care. Which means, what did they say I should say to this man, my husband? Mini I care in care. Mini means what? I care. Did they say, not even Mini I care. It means that what is being said in the air? I care. Mina care. In care. What, what is being said that I should say? And so, based on that, he said that his wife has not repented. Are you there? So it's not a matter of me, I can't care. I care what can grumble, you can't tell me. No. It's not a matter of whether they say you shouldn't grumble. It's you and God. Briders. Briders. The Bible did not say you cannot do anything against yourself. (laughs) It didn't say you cannot do anything against yourself. But you cannot do anything against the truth. (laughs) Let us read. It is more frightening later. Which verse are we on? 20 what? 7. You grumbled in your tents and said, because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the land of the Amorite to destroy us. 
Where can we go up? Our brethren have made our hearts melt, saying, the people are bigger and taller. Now, in those days, if you are tall, it's very important because when you are tall, you are swinging the sword like this. You see, and if you are fighting with a short guy, the short guy's sword will just be here. You get it? So, but the tall guy will be doing this and like this. You get it? So, when you are tall, it's very important. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so the Bible says they are bigger and taller. Because that type of warfare is man to man. That is why when Goliath came there, he defied the armies of Israel. He said, if you are bold, come. Anyone who says he's bold, he should come. I will meet you square. Am I not a human being? Am I not a human being? And the Bible says some of them have six fingers and six toes. With very long arms. <laughs> so when you are going to fight, he cannot even reach you. So the guys frightened even the soldiers and said, You are going to fight with very tall people. If you are bold, go. <laughs> Amen. What verse are we? 28. Where can we go up? Ah, where is it? Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, the people is greater and taller, and the cities are great and walled up to heaven. The walls have reached heaven, heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there, which are the giants. I care what say, Charlie, it is getting to the heavens. Now, now look. Oh. God is moving on. And suddenly, this is the first smell of something that is getting spoiled. Briders. Are you here? You cannot do anything against the truth. But do not say you cannot do anything against yourself. You can hurt yourself. But you can never hurt the truth. You can harm yourself. You know, people think that that verse means we cannot do anything against the truth means that, oh, me as a pa- pastor Paul, uh, Paul my, all my preaching it can never be against the gospel. I can't speak messages that make the gospel less. Or I can't preach messages that reduce them. I can only preach messages which are truthful. Sadia, but what God is saying is that your life, what you do, what you do not do, what you obey, what you don't obey, can never go against the truth. And against the gospel. Say, who will do it? And now who will do it? Oh. It won't go against the gospel itself. But if it will go against anybody, it will go against you. I will explain. I will explain it fully. All right? Are you there? Now, which verse are we on? 20 what? 9. Okay. Now the Lord God, then I said, you see, Moses is reminding them, I said unto you, dread not, neither be afraid. Please. Please. Don't spoil everything now. Please. Please. Don't spoil everything now. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil the church. Don't spoil your blessings. Don't spoil what God has given to you. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it with your mouth. Don't spoil it with your attitude. We cannot do, we cannot go. It's not possible. When I'm taking offering, you must be very happy. You must be excited. When I say we are fasting, you must be happy. When I say we are going, you must go. 
Whatever the Lord is saying through your leader. Huh? You see, God told Aaron, God told Moses, you will be to Aaron instead of God. Instead of God. You see, many times, the man that God has given you is there instead of God. He is to you. And he told Aaron, Moses that Aaron will be to you instead of a mouth. <laughs> instead of a mouth, you have Aaron. And you, Moses, will be to him instead of God. Go and read Exodus. That is how come we have faith to obey the men of God who God places over our lives. Sometimes you ask yourself, why do you believe this person? Why do you obey? Is he not younger than you? Or is he not just your same age? Or even if he's older than you, cry by six months. Do you see? But the question is, why do you follow? Because this is what, I think if Aaron was older than Moses, I'm not sure. But you find out that he is to you instead of God. <laughs> Go read your Bibles. Don't spoil it. Briders. Briders. Don't spoil it. I went to a church one day. It used to be the largest church in Europe. When I got there, I saw how large the hall was. And they had stacked chairs all at the back. And the congregation was just a small part. And they told me we used to have thousands of people here, white people. And then it came. Adam was in the garden with Eve. Enjoying. And then the serpent came through the through the through the wall. Come in, I did. Adam and Eve were happy. called his wife. And she also called him, honey. You know my neighbor, he used to call all his children with a whistle. <laughs> it's for somebody. It's also another person. So Adam and Eve, they were, they were calling one another. That means honey. And a sweetheart. <laughs> but then the serpent saw that they were too happy. So he started coming. He was moving. Hey! Hey, Yegbe, yeah. And possess and do greater things. The serpent came in and gave them, you see, and that is why anybody who is against my message of loyalty and faithfulness, that person is usually inspired by the devil. Oh, yes. Because what is against loyalty and faithfulness? God said, Don't eat this. And you, you get up and you come and throw questions about any clear-cut instruction that has been given. Are you sure? Has God said, is it really the way, this and that, that and that? So many questions. And then suddenly, a clear thing is changing. Oh. May I watch people. Somebody wrote to me and told me all sorts of things. And I said, look, this one is the devil. You don't know. But he's coming. Keep smiling, Adam. Keep smiling, Eve. Tomorrow morning, something is going to enter your life, which is going to change everything. Have you seen eggs? Do you know what is called scrambled eggs? Egg, you see, you open the egg. One, two, three, four. It is in the bowl. Nice. Round, round, round. When they make it like this, Scramble. You will not see as it was before. You will never see it again. The scrambler is arriving. Zoom, zoom, 
zoom, coming to scramble the eggs. Are you there? I told you that I, f- I finished preaching. It's a short message. Which verse are we on? Tw- 20 what? 29. Dread not. Now the Lord your God which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did in Egypt before your eyes and in the wilderness thou, where thou hast seen that the Lord thy God bear thee as a man doth bear his son in all the way that he went till he came to this place. Yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord God who went in the way before you to set out a place to pitch your tents in fire by night to show you what way you should go and in a cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words. And he was rough. And he swear, saying, Surely shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land which I swear to give to your fathers. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it. And to him I will give that land which he hath trodden upon, and to his children, because he had wholly followed the Lord. And also the Lord was angry with me for your sake, saying, Thou shalt not go in thither, but Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Now notice verse 39. We are ending. Moreover, your little ones, your little ones, which you said should be a prey. That means you said they will be killed. And your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil. They, they, the ones you said will be eaten. They shall go in, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Return to wilderness. Mercy. Decide to be an obedient child of God. Because you cannot do anything against God's truth. Amen. Let's read because I think we can finish something small there. Then he answered, when God has told you, return to the wilderness. We have sinned against the Lord, and we will go up and fight according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. And when he had gathered on every man his weapons of war, and you were ready to go up onto the hill, the Lord said unto me, say to them, do not go up and neither fight, for I am not among you, lest you be smitten before your enemies. So I spoke to you, but you would not hear. But you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord and went presumptuously into the hill. And the Amorites which dwelt in that mountain came out against you and chased you as bees do and destroyed you. And you returned and wept before the Lord. But the Lord would not hearken to your voice nor give ear unto you. So you abode in Kadesh many days according to the days that you abode, abode there. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm happy that we have read this verse today. Amen. First, God said, go. You wouldn't go. Then he said, don't go. Now you are going. Amen. Hey! Amen. <laughs> and you see, God, you can never tell what God is saying. No. Today, he's saying, don't go. Tomorrow, he's saying, go. And it's the same God. One moment, he says, go. Another moment, he says, don't go. You have to learn how to be close to the Lord and how to follow him in your life. There may be a time God will say, I expect you to work for me full time. There may be a time you say, I expect you not to work for me full time. You have to follow the Lord. But I want to say something, brothers. You cannot do anything. You cannot spoil the truth. There is no mistake I can make that can go against the truth. Pastor Steve, there is nothing that I can do that will fight against God's truth. I can't. Your greatest mistake in your life will not hinder the truth. Do you know why? 
Everybody, listen to this part. If you don't hear any part, look, hold the person next to you and say, it's only this place that he, you, you need to hear. Only this particular place. I, I wake up and listen. It is good Friday, a good Thursday today. Tomorrow is good Friday. Are you listening? These people could not prevent the plan of God. God's plan never changed. They are the ones who lost. God had intended to make his nation. He made his nation. He intended to build his tabernacle. For the tabernacle, it was made. It was made in the wilderness. It was made in Exodus chapter 25. He made his tabernacle. He did his things. He ordained his priests. He did everything that he wanted. The people who, you see, you cannot do anything, whether you turn like this, or you go like this, or you orangulize, or you fight, or you reject, or you go, you don't go, you, you do, you don't do. Nothing can stop God's plan. Isaiah 14, 26 says, God has stretched out his hand. Who can turn his hand back? Who can turn back what God has purpose? You are the one who will never drink honey. Milk and sugar and honey were promised them. They never drank it. You will spoil your own life, but you will never spoil God's life. The truth, we can do nothing against it. No matter what you don't do. You see, that is, that is what has even relaxed me in my ministry. There's nothing I can do if, if, I, if I decide not to preach anymore. It's not going to prevent God's word. He will, he, will do, he will do it without me. If I even fall into sin, it will never affect God's work. It will affect me, but it will not affect his work. <laughs> Nobody can spoil God's work. If you do not give money, it will never prevent us from doing God's work. You, it will prevent you from getting your blessing. It is the milk and the honey they were supposed to eat and enjoy in the promised land. They never had it. For the tabernacle, it was built. The priesthood, it was established. The work of the laws, they were written. Everything was done, but they never inherited and enjoyed the hand and the blessings that God had for them. You cannot do anything against the truth. Think of how many of us have been lazy. When it comes to the work of God, has it prevented and will it ever prevent? Even a thousand pastors, if we all preach false messages, it will not prevent the truth of God's word. God is far greater than any of us. He is greater than Lighthouse and uh, Pentecost and any church or anybody who does and doesn't do what he's supposed to do. His plan is fixed. Read it in Revelation. We end in the garden, back in the tree, back with the river of life. It will never be affected. President Bush may bomb, he may not bomb, whatever. It will not affect God's hand and God's word. So when God is calling you, you are not special to come to change anything about anything. It is just an opportunity to be around and to be involved. There is nothing you can do against the truth, even for the truth. You, you, you cannot do anything that will hinder that's why, that's why there are a lot of people, they feel we are begging them to come and work for God. God is really begging you. If you can please find some time for God. If you can please find some time to help God's work. Oh, God really needs you. God is really begging. He's standing in the rain. If you can please come and work for him, he will really appreciate. Hey, God dear, if you work for me, you'll be very happy. You are the one who has the chance. If you like, Come. If you don't like, you cannot do anything that will fight against God's truth. And you see, that frees me. Some time ago when I saw people, you know, in certain situations. You see, that's why you have to be mature before you can pass judgment. I would like to pray that certain people will die. But these days when I see people who hinder the work of God, I know that neither they are living nor they are dying can change or do anything against the truth of God. There is no human being who can counteract what God has decided to do. His presence, his death, his life. You people, have faith in God. Oh. 
God is great. Well, you see, that thing the Muslims say is something we have to learn. We have to learn it from them if necessary. God is very great. Nobody can spoil his work. Reverend Saki, you cannot spoil God's work. You can't. There's nothing you can do that will prevent it. His truth matches on. Nobody is important. If it was a, do you think that somebody like Pastor Bimbo can die on a plane? When her personal assistant will survive, why didn't she survive? Huh? Do you think that her going from this earth can prevent God's truth from marching on? No. No, it does not. You are not important. You are being given an opportunity. That is all that you have. It's an opportunity. And God is saying to you, you have been where you are long enough. And when he wants to move you, please, move. Move quickly. Eh? And when he wants to use you, use you quick, you, you allow him to use you quickly. Don't wait till you are dead or half dead before you say, oh, <laughs> can, I, uh, can I give something to the Lord? Uh, can I make an offering? Can I do something for Jesus? Can I come to work in the church? Can I come to do whatever? No. This is the time. Now is the time. Accept God. Look at everybody, look at me. I am of no relevance. I don't want to swear. I have no bearing. I'm just privileged to stand here and to see all of you here. It's an honor. For me, the honor is with me. I am the one who is privileged. I am the one who is honored by God. God has, ble- I mean, his, that is his greatest blessing upon my life. I, 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 if I do this, I don't do this, I do this. It cannot go against God's work. He's great. His plan is fixed. There's no president in Ghana who can prevent God's work. You see, but in those days, we, we think that men are greater than God. So we feel this one should die. I will not easily think that somebody should die for God's work to go on. There are times I used to feel this person should die so that God's hand. <laughs> you see, but now that's why when we pronounce certain things, it doesn't happen. How many have prayed for somebody to die? They didn't die. Raise your hand. Yeah, most of us have prayed for people to die before and they did not die. Kill them, Lord. Chase them by angels, Lord. They have become fatter and stronger. Some of them are even prospering. Flourishing. Why does God allow people like Nero and others who persecuted the church and killed Christians why does he allow people like Idi Amin? None of those people can hinder what God is going to do. We cannot do anything against the truth. So you, huh? You cannot, and I'll tell you, I've seen it in the church. People who were great and important, some of them died and the church marched on better than when they were around. If they were to rise from the dead now, they would be surprised at what they left, what has become of what they left. And even the people that, that, were in, that, that, that are now prominent, they had no regard for them when they were alive. No one. James McKeown, when he was dying, he, when he was, you know, in his, one of his last interviews, he said, I'm so disappointed. He wrote the names of his, some of his apostles. In a book, and he, oh, he was so disappointed with them. He said that the thing about the Ghanaian pastor is that they like uh, 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 money and other things too much. They are greedy. That's what he wrote in his book. What he has seen about the Ghanaian pastor is greed. He was so sad. He said, I sent this one to Ivory Coast. I thought he would do more. But he didn't do anything. I thought this one, when he marries me, this one is to do well, but they didn't. You see, but you cannot do anything against it because the thing has marched on without him. He resigned and he stood back. 
he would attend his own church and see all that God is doing. A pastor getting divorced cannot do anything against the truth. You may think it is doing something against the truth. Anybody who falls away was going to fall away. <laughs> you were going to fall. You see, when, when Solomon became the king, his father advised him, he said, you see this guy, this guy, this guy. Even Adonijah who tried to be the king. He spied all of them. He didn't say anything. He said like, when you give the opportunity, I'll strike you, I'll kill you. And Adonijah came to ask for the young girl who was with his father. That was his opportunity. As soon as he said, hey, you want the woman who my father had, then it means you want the throne as well. Ben, 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 ben Onia or Beno or Benaya, go and kill him. He was just waiting. Some of you, you are waiting to backslide. You haven't got your visa yet. That is why you haven't backslidden. Some of you are waiting to backslide. You haven't got the money yet. That is why you haven't backslidden. Some of you, you are waiting to backslide. You haven't married yet. When you marry, the backsliding will happen. Oh, yeah. Certain blessings. It's not somebody doing something or not doing something which is going to prevent the work of God. Look into history, you will see. God is calling us to rise as a people and to run. Look, let me talk about loyalty and disloyalty. There are elements in the church. Your mouths are like snake mouths. I'm telling you. I'm not a child. When we move around and people smile at us and say, Bishop, good morning, good afternoon. There are those of us in our tents, we grumble and we say things and God is warning you. Be very careful. Be very careful. Because in your heart is a serpent. And that thing, God has heard and he said that, that you were talking about your children. He said that those children will not will, will die. And, and God said, I've, I've seen. You will die and your children will be alive. Watch out what you say because it will come back. One day a brother sat in my office. He said, I wish I could take back the words I have spoken against you. That's what he said. And I said, what is, what is the use of that? You have already said all those things. When I was in Kolebu, starting the church, I had a whole lot of nursing students and medical students and they turned on me. They turned on me like, 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 like wolves would turn on, 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 on a sheep or, or an antelope or something that can be eaten and devoured me with their mouths. There are people that I met years after who were in Kolebu and they said, hey, what type of church is this? The things that we heard about you. But none of those things could prevent the truth. You see, you cannot do anything against the truth of God's word. I'm telling you, you can fight it, oppose it, Try to kill it. Try to do whatever. You cannot spoil what God is doing. Even I cannot spoil it. How much more you? They crucified me to the last element. I went to see people who were senior pastors. I remember I went to airport. I sat in uh, the pastor's house. He pulled a chair out in the garden and I sat, it was in the airport residential area and he pulled that and he said, well, you know, I, I said, oh, I come to tell you I'm starting to start a church. The words that he spoke, you see, it only reminds me of Nabal. When Nabal was told about David, that David needed some food, he was in the wilderness. The words that he spoke, he said, who is David? There are these young men these, these days who rebel against their masters, going around doing whatever. Who is David? It is always when I remember what I was told in that garden. I only remember the words of Naba. No boys, you get up, you say you are starting churches. Instead of getting a blessing. That is why I encourage people when they are starting churches. Because I was not encouraged. But nobody's discouragement or even opposition or even fight. So where I was holding my chair, instead of this person to come and assist me or even encourage me or so, well done. He called his pastor and he said, I want you to go to Kolebu and hold 
a program of my church. A solid program. I invite the whole community and show them the way to my church. God, he says he has started a church. I want you to show them the way to my church. So he brought a documentary of his church. I have not seen such a nice documentary before. Preaching to crowds and supernatural powers and miracles and other things. For, and here I was, I look like a fool. Fifth year medical student, you say you are a pastor. And God has called you. But you see, you cannot do anything against the truth. Try to press it. Try to push it. Try to destroy it. You cannot. There are some people when I preach, they sit at the back and they pass comments. You will die from your comments. You watch and see. I'm not cursing you. But your comments will turn into your mouth like knives. They will cut your tongue into pieces and your, your, your salivary glands will be dissipated. And other forms of glands in your body will turn into other things. Yeah. You sit in your tents and grumbles. Eh? You, and the things that you say, those things. You see, look, one day Jesus, a, a woman came to Jesus and said to her, to him, um, the dogs, you give us, uh, Jesus, I can't give my whatever to the dog. He said, the dogs eat. And Jesus said, for this thy saying. God hears you, everything you say. He said, for this thy saying. For this word, this thing that you said. Quietly, not preaching, not standing in the pulpit. Quietly in your room, in your hall, in your land, in your car. And this thing that you've said, it will turn against you. Keep watching. It's a spiritual thing. You see, one day I went to a certain pastor's house. And uh, he was talking there. He lifted his finger. He said, you know something? Whether it takes 10 years or 20 years, the word of God cannot be broken. Whatsoever a man soweth, he shall reap. And he was pointing to some people who were spoiling somebody's church. He said they will reap it. He said, even if it takes 10 years. Exactly 10 years from the time that he spoke, it happened. Bam! But for 10 years, it was like power and fire and heaven is moving and rolling. Brothers and sisters, watch your mouth. I must watch my mouth. I've learned to watch my mouth. Nobody should ask me what I think about a, a pastor or somebody. I don't think. Do you understand? I don't think. I flow with God. You get it? And he has appointed his own servants. If he doesn't like somebody, he will tell the person himself. Yeah, leave it to God. Watch your mouth. I say, watch your mouth. There are some people, eh? you have the audacity to talk. For instance, maybe we say we are, we are building a basilica. They say, what is basilica? How can you call the church a basilica? Hey, you, better be, you better watch out. You better be careful with your tongue and with your mouth in this church. Huh? Because if you don't take care of your funeral, will come before the wedding you thought it would, that would happen. Yeah. Yeah. You better watch your mouth, okay? It's a church. And it's God's work. If God doesn't like me, you hear I'm, I'm gone. I'll go. He's the one who brought me. I don't know all these people. I, I did not gather them from anywhere. I came to meet it also, and I'm also just flowing for the time that I'll be here. Yeah. Watch what you say in your tent. Some of you, you cannot prosper because of that. Your, your words are fighting you every day. When you get up in the morning, you are going to prosper. The thing that you said, the seed that you sow against the one who loved you and against the people that have poured their lives and sacrificed their time and their life and even their children for you. Those words are coming back like small. It's not, it's not a big spear, but it's like a small mini spear, like a mini dart. And it's coming back. And when it enters your blood, a certain poison flows through the system and comes to your heart and paralyzes your heart. And your heart becomes like a stone. That is how Nabal became when he spoke against God's servant. But Abigail, his wife, saw it. So even if your husband and wife say that your husband has become a fool, you keep your mouth correctly. Oh, yeah. Watch out. Watch out, lest you, a strange fire comes for you. When God says we are going this way, just go. 
Yeah. Watch out. Pastors, pastors. I'm talking to pastors who complain. Pastors I appointed. Nobody knew you as a pastor. I appointed you as a pastor. Nobody in this world will ever know you as a pastor. In fact, if you leave this church, you see you are not a pastor. You are grumbling against me in your tent. Not that it doesn't mean it, it will never do anything against the truth. Even me, when I grumble against myself, it won't do anything against the truth. How much more when you grumble? It will never affect, has never affected, and can never affect. Somebody went to Archbishop uh, Duncan Williams' church. The whole church is full. Full of people. Full of members. Full of cars. And they said, hey, this one, the man has traveled though. And the church is working. And it is full of people. And more people are coming. And, and there's blessing there. You will never understand it. Because there's nothing anybody can do against the truth. Keep trying to spoil it. You can't spoil it. You can't spoil what God is doing. You can only spoil your own life. That's why I say, as we go, let's all go and eat honey. Because see, I'll tell you, there are two things. The tabernacle was built and there was honey for you, but the tabernacle there to go on. <laughs> tabernacle will go on, but you will not eat honey. You will not drink the milk. You will sit in the wilderness and follow snakes. You will eat snake kebab until you are tired. Crabs. Desert crabs, cactus, and coconut trees. Look, there are people here God has called you to help. There are people God has called to help me. Help the ministry. Do it. You can't. I will not need help forever. <laughs> I'll not need help forever. Do what you have to do. It's not anything special. There are some of you, God has called you to full-time ministry. And he will never change his mind till you die. <laughs> he will never change his mind. His mind has not changed. When I was preaching about full-time ministry, some people were complaining about me. Are you not the one who... Uh, taught us about lay people and when we are doing lay people then you are telling us is he not the one who said go and fight then the next day he said do not go and fight the same God don't complain just don't complain and learn to follow him and a blessing will come how many are ready to go to another level hey are you people ready? Because do you know the people who backslide more? They are rich people. And many of you are going to be rich. Because God has, you see, God showed me a certain amount of, I don't know whether I should mention that amount, but it is in dollars. And it is millions of dollars that he is going to give to me to do his work. To build churches. He gave me the specific amount for building of churches. And another amount for doing things like preaching, radio, crusade, this, that. He has given me this too. And those things have been given to me. Many of you are going to be blessed. Because of this covenant. And they said that it is the Lord your God who giveth thee power tomorrow when you come. Who giveth thee power and anointing to get wealth. That means that wealth getting is with power. I say, it's the Lord your God which giveth the power or anointing to get wealth. So if tomorrow the Lord gives us a chance and we are anointing you with the anointing of a thousand times more and for the wealth that God has got, it's not because you are good, but because he has already determined a certain amount that he is doing and is going to do in the spirit realm. And he has shown it to me. He has revealed it to me. It's not because you are good, but his covenant and his determination. He's doing it so that he can establish it. The truth is marching on. With you, without you. Please be part of it. How many are going to be part of it? 
How many of you know friends who are not correct friends? Do you know? Who knows such people? They talk by her. Some of you complain about Pastor Prince. Some of you complain about Pastor Prince. I saw a certain crab holding your lips. Yeah. Because what he's doing is what I told him to do. So when you fight him, you are fighting against me. Yeah. You are fighting him. You are fighting me. When I sent him and you fight him, you are fighting me. That's what people don't know. When I put somebody in charge there, even if the person is a goat, that's the person that I have and that I want to be there. There are some of you in recent times, you have had the audacity to make comments about people that have empo- appointed or employed. That is why you will never be an employer. You cannot. As you rise, something will push you down. You can only be employed. You can never employ. Because you have a spoken against an employer. Yeah. When you start to go up like this, you come down. Oh, yeah. When I have put somebody there, in, in my stupidity, I put the person there. So you are telling me that I am a fool. That is why I decided to work with such a person. Watch out, brother. I'm not cursing you. I see Benny Hinn said something. He said, you know, there was a young man who worked with him. I don't know whether it was a bodyguard or something. And the guy turned against him. And he was talking. He said, look, one day he was praying. And this guy was harassing them in the ministry. Hey! You see, no matter the level and no matter what good you are doing, there are always Satan, the Bible says, the, and the dragon fought against the lamb. So if he fight against the lamb, how much more Benin? him? And he said, something came over him. And, he, and, and the Lord said to him, speak desolation, desolation into the guy's life. So he opened his mouth and said, I pray desolation should come into this guy. He said the next day they were at a meeting. A young person, they came and told him, so 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 is dead. He said, what? A young person, dead. He said he was afraid. He became afraid of himself and of the things that he was saying. Watch out as you fool around with God's help. And some of you will make yourself agents for spies. You come around and show them, say, this is what they do. This is where they go. This is what they have. Watch out. Your portion. You see, Jesus met fornicators, liars, thieves, but task collectors, pursued pilate. He never made any comment about them. But for Judas, he said that it would have been better that you were not born. Perhaps it is the most serious of all crimes to betray and to be disloyal. May God give you a loyal heart. And may you flow with him. Stand to your feet, everybody. How many are excited about my message today? We cannot do anything against the truth. Amen. All right. Tell the person next to you, Charlie, you look very tired and sleepy and I mean...
Look, brothers and sisters. Anything you see and you don't understand it, Uncle James told me, put it in a wardrobe and close the door. Later on, you go for it and you see whether you understand it. If you don't understand it, put it back. But one day when you open the wardrobe, you will understand it. Amen? 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 Amen. All right. We are blessed, I tell you. How many can, you see, when God is taking you somewhere, sometimes he has to warn you. Is is it not true? How many realize that it's true? Sometimes he has to really warn you. And somebody may think my message is frivolous or it's unnecessary. Uh, but let me tell you one thing before I sit down because the Lord told me to tell you I believe he was telling me to tell but I, it's a long story so I didn't want to say but let me just say it anyway one day one day I was I had a vision and in the vision I saw myself walking on the road and as I was walking on the road I had a friend on my left and a friend on my right three of us, and we were just chatting. We were in our tent, and I made a comment about another pastor, a big pastor. And way down towards the mountain, there was an animal like a hog. Do you know a hog? A pig, black one. A pig. Swine. Boto. Okay. And as I went, we were going this way, but the thing was here. As soon as I made the comment, I felt something has started to move. How many realize sometimes you feel something is moving somewhere? You tend to see. This is, I keep seeing, whether it's a spirit or an angel or something. So I turned, and there I saw this thing. Started walking like that. Go, 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 go. It was like an animal that has very determined. Normally, they don't walk like that. And I was walking with my two friends, and I said, can I have two friends? Two. I was walking with two friends like that, to my side. Just be at my side. A bit to the side. Okay. Just walk slowly. But I felt the thing was coming. So, I continued. But I felt it was coming. Then I realized it was coming and it came all the way from very far. What happened was when I made that comment to him, the thing heard it in the spirit. Do you see when the Bible said the Lord heard it in their tents? You grumbled. And when I turned around, this animal jumped up to me. To here. It was coming like this. And when it came at that, and you see, he left the guy on the right and left the guy on the because I'm the one who made the comment. And as it came into my chest, I screamed and I got up. I was in the hotel. Then the Lord said to me, when you open your mouth and you speak against my servants, whom I have directed, you are calling demons, evil spirits, sickness, and other things to come into your life. Because a man of God had really offended me and I just just had a comment to make. I was frightened. And the Lord said, when you open your mouth to speak, watch out, brother. Watch out. The spirit realm is as though it's next door. As if it's just here. When you speak, it's thousands, but it's like just here. When you speak, it's like there's a microphone loud in heaven. God doesn't know what he's doing. God is not good. God is wicked. God brought us to kill us. Hey, and it's loud in heaven like that. Amplifiers with speakers. God is here. It's ash. When you speak against his servants, watch out. Don't talk about things you don't know. Hold somebody's lips and say, hey, don't talk, don't talk again. (laughs) 
All right. All right. Lift your hands to the Lord. Everybody, as we enter, I feel, listen, I feel like it's 31st night and we are entering into something. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I said, I feel as though it's 31st night and we are entering into a new year and a new chapter. Lift your hands and enter. 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 It is a family. It is a body. We are all entering. We are all entering. Something great. Something blessed. Something that is 1,000 times more than what originally was delivered unto us. We receive it, oh God. We take it, oh God. We love it, oh God. Manolo Sabarala Mamanda. We receive it, oh Jesus. Oh, pray, pray, pray. Don't expect me to give a, a song or music. I'm asking you to pray for some time. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, my Jesus. My Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mandolo Mora, Maralamande, Le Beredisho, Delin Goromosan, Tele Zomorakesh, Stiligaras, Medole, Marandes, Melores, Baredeles, Dalamrigedes, Malengres. Oh, yes. Yes, Jesus. Give us this new land. Ask God, give us this new land. Give me this new land of my life, of the church, and of your work. Give it to us, oh God. Maraloros, 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 Amerilos, Sayandolo Moromolish. Ko maramando lo morobolo shagaba. Oh yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. My yamolo no no rilen se merilen de belen de relimino. Tirila, 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 tirila. Farion moro no moshi merigeles. Te lucamo luca rimani in amindolo morile mesendele mer. Oh yes. 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 Thank you Jesus. Oh, speak to God. He has warned us today. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody stand to your feet. From the tree to Victory, his army shall he live.
from victory, from victory. Before is bound and life is love in me. Look at me, everybody. Do you know that there are many milestones in your life? Many yet to ha- happen. Some of you are yet to become parents. Some of you are yet to become grandparents. Some of you are yet to be 30 years old. Some of you are yet to be 20 years old. Some of you are yet to own a car. Some of you are yet to build a house. Some of you are yet to pass a certain age where certain diseases kill people. But God is going to take us deeper and higher into his will and into his land. And we are going to continue to press on. And we are going to fight the good fight. We are going to run the race that God has given to us. We are going to finish our course that he has laid before us. We shall live and not die. A lot of things want to prevent us from serving God. But we shall not allow any of those things to keep us out of God's blessings and out of God's hand that he has for us. Lift your hands from victory to victory. His army shall hear till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord. Lift your hand from victory from the outside. Lift your hands to the Lord. Yes, Jesus. His army shall heal it. Till every foe is bound. And Christ is Lord. Close your eyes, everybody. Father, thank you for your blessing tonight. If you are here tonight, you are not born again. You are not a born again Christian. I want to pray with you before we close the service. You want to say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray with me. I want to give my life to God. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Pray with me. I'm not a born again Christian. Somebody brought me to your church, but I I know in my heart, If I die today or tomorrow, I will go to hell. Please help me. Please pray with me. I want to be saved. If you can pray for me, please help me. I want to pray with you. If you are here like that, lift up just your right hand and I'm going to pray with you. Lift up your right hand. Stand where you are and lift up your right hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see all your hands. Lift it up high. I want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God today. I don't want to go to hell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see all your hands. If you have lifted your hand, come from where you are, upstairs, far away, at the back, outside. Come to me. I'm standing here. I'm waiting for you. Come down. Come to the front. I want to pray with you right now. From victory to victory. Come all the way to the front. Here, Sami Shahili. Till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord in from victory, from victory.
from victory. Sing it from the bottom of your heart. God is taking us from victory to victory. He's blessing us. He's making us a thousand times more. All right. Those of you in front here, lift your hands up and pray with me. And everybody join. Say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Today I come to you just as I am. Have mercy on me. Please cleanse me from every sin. From today. From today. I give my life. I give my heart. I give my soul to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Please write my name in the book of life. From today, I belong to God. I belong to Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a mighty, mighty clap offering. All right. All of you, go with our pastor who is waving a hand over here. She's going to talk with you and then you'll come back and join her. Now, everybody stand up. The Lord is asking me to do something. If you are here and you realize that there are, there, you need the cleansing of God for your tongue. I mean, you are in this church, but you have not been loyal to the church. And you want God's mercy. I want you to come to the front. I want to pray for you. Come. Come. You are in the church, but you know your mouth has not been correct. Come and be delivered. You are afraid to come. Come. I will not soften what I'm saying. Come and stand here. I want to pray with you. You are around. Or you are waiting for a lot of people to come, then you join them. Come, come, let me pray with you. I'm praying. And I'm the pastor because everything that you have said, you are, you are saying it against me. And I'm going to release you from the words of your own mouth. Our God shall have mercy and bless you and forgive you. Come, come. And I'm not going to wait for much longer. There are more of you. You know with your mouth, you have not been, you you say things and have said things that are some way. Come, let us pray over you. Ask the person next to you, look, if you are the Achan in the church, do you know Achan? Better arrive at the front quickly. (laughs) Okay. Very good. Lift your hands. Okay. Lift your hands. Father, I release all these people from the words of their mouth. Let them never reap it, but let mercy be over their lives. I pray for your mercy and for your blessing in Jesus' name. And all of us, lift your hand and ask God for mercy. Wait, put your hands up. How many realize that although you didn't come, you should have been here? Lift your hands quickly. Let's pray. Father, We pray for mercy, forgiveness, grace, help. Save us. Save us from our tongues, our comments, our remarks, our thoughts. Jesus, thank you for your blessing and for your mercy. I release everybody, Lord. Let us not reap what we sow. I ask it, Father, just as I will not like to reap what I have sown. I pray that there will be a mercy in this church for all of us. 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You are all blessed. Amen. <laughs> Sit down. Well, this is an altar call that I'm happy that a lot, a lot of people didn't come. Maybe it means the church has loyalty in it. What do you think? <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down. Hallelujah. Are you seated? Nobody should go out. I've put a skipping rope in the spirit at that door. If you are bold, you can go there. Amen. Outside, can you see me? If you can see me outside. Uh huh, okay. We thought we wouldn't be here by this time. And we are still here. God is great. God knows what He's doing. Amen. Right. It's time we are going to burn fire now. Before, how many are ready to burn fire? I told you that when there is a festival, you bring offerings and you burn them before the Lord. Yesterday, we, we took overseas offering. Is that not so? Give me a basket. All those who have that envelope, the special overseas offering in dollars, euros, pounds, sefa, naira, whatever you have, and you are bringing Huh? Give me my horn. Fill my horn with oil. The crowd is thick. So, it's not easy to do everything that you want to do. But we are going to do what the Lord guides us to do. How many can realize that it's a prophetic convention? We are heading toward... You see, you are my children. I've gathered you to talk to you and to tell you where we are going. Is that not so? Yes. Yeah. Stand to the side. If you brought your envelope, come and put it here. I want to pray. Uh, this is not the CDs, wife. The CDs don't bring it now. Dollars, euros, pounds. Come and sow your seed. Bring more baskets, please. Reverend Saki is also standing here. Come and plant. I tell you, one day when you are reaping. God bless you as you give. Dollar, euro, pound, dollar. Do you know dollar? Yesterday I told you what is dollar. This is offering in dollars, euros, pounds, safer. Naira, come and sow. You will one day own a house abroad from this offering that you are giving in the name of Jesus. Come and plant it. Come from outside. If you didn't have that envelope, please, all those coming this way, come to the front here. Come straight this way. If you were not around, you can also pick an envelope for overseas offering. Ah, it's a sweet smelling offering to the Lord. Amen. We are burning it to the Lord. Instead of staying inside your pillowcase, we are going to burn it and give it to the Lord. Amen. Right. Now, those who have the first day uh, offering, 
You have been here long enough offering. 200,000, 100,000. Bring it now. If you are, you were not here yesterday, you didn't bring, bring it. You have been here long enough offering. Yesterday was a thousand times more offering. But today, bring this one quickly. 100,000, 200,000, whatever. May the Lord bless you. God bless you. You have been here long enough offering. Remember, 100,000, 200,000, whatever. Bring it. Amen. Hallelujah. In case I forget, tomorrow we are bringing all the coins in the house. Okay? In case I don't mention it again. United Nations of any coins that you have. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Look, one day, you see, I want to tell you something. There are many people, they were here with us, Imam Probi in particular. They are in America now. When I see them, they are all Americans. But we were in Mamprobi. Many of my people, I can't see them. Sometimes you wonder why the church is still young looking. Because many of the people have traveled. And, and all these people are in our churches abroad. I went to Sheffield. Hey, people from Kumasi, people from here, people from here. Sheffield. Do you know Sheffield? Far? Huh? Sheffield Wednesday. Okay. Far away. Manchester. You went to preach in Manchester. I best I can went to more people. All of them are Leeds. Other places. So one day, when you see me at a certain place, tell me, Bishop, I was giving dollars and pounds in Collegono. It's not a London you have to talk about giving pounds and dollars. Amen. Now, we have come to a very important point. I told you that we are going to burn offerings. Please, I've not done this for the last 13 years, what I'm coming to do now. Amen. And I am anointed to do it. And I am anointed to lead my people spiritually to the next place. Because God has anointed me to do it. Amen. And I'm here to lead you to God's blessing. Both the tabernacle and the milk and the honey are going to be combined. You see, if you look at me, I have not become poor. Rather, in fact, I have more wealth available at my disposal. If I mean I want air conditioner on the stage so that when I'm preaching, the air conditioner will be blowing. I can ask them to make it. Nobody can say he won't do it. Nobody. Even if they say that window, I say I like it. God has blessed me. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, yes. I don't know how much milk costs. Milk. Such things don't bother me. Milk, sugar. God has raised me above milk and sardines and sugar. Ask my wife. I used to preach in this church and me and her, we go home together in our Renault 4. And I will discuss with her, what are we going to eat? And we will put together money to buy one tin of combi. What is the name of that shop? Huh? Junior's End. There was a shop near our house called Junior's End. 
I don't know if it's still there. Junior's end. We used to go. My wife is an expert maker of corned beef stew. No, most of you don't know how to cook, but my wife knows how to cook. I don't want to lie to you. Sometimes when I finish it, and I become so happy, I say, thank you for every, I'm, I'm so blessed in the house. Oh, it's true. I don't want to, I don't want to lie. Some of you are clapping, you don't know how to cook. You know, you know yourself. What do you think? Yeah. But God has blessed me. I don't know how much they sell corned beef, but I know that by the grace of God, if I say I'm taking an offering of corned beef tomorrow for me personally to eat for the next 10 years, how many will bring corned beef for me? I'll eat that. Uh, even the stew will be more than the rice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I am going to pray for you. But one day I asked the Lord, Lord, how can I minister finances? I mean like, I know I can minister the spirit. If I want to minister the spirit, I say, lift your hand and I pray. Then I minister the spirit through laying on of hands and other things. So how do you minister finances? And I pray genuinely. And the Lord said, lead the people to give. Lead the people to plant a seed and just pray for them. That's how. Pastors, if you want to minister to your people financially, that is how to do it because it's a spiritual thing. So and you reap. You understand? So if you are a minister and you want to help the people that you are leading financially, lead them to give. That is how to lead them to blessings. And I'm going to do that tonight. Amen. You see, I'm looking, all these money that we are collecting, you see, the bills that we have, you don't have an idea. I don't want to go to because it's it is discouraging. You get it? But I told you that at least we'll put the roof on the building. And the roof cost 700 million for the sheets. Only the sheets. There's no ceiling, no roofing truss, no pellings, no labor, no light, no wire, nothing. Just the sheets. But I believe that we should do it. And that it's a sin if we do not do it. We must do it from here. And tomorrow is Good Friday. It's the day of the greatest sacrifice. It has nothing to do with money. So today, we are moving into ultimate sacrifice. And I want most of you, it doesn't matter what you've given, or many of you put $5, $10, and so on. Some put 100 But I was in the tent with you when you were removing it. I believe God that you must all, all, all. Tomorrow is a holiday, you see. Yeah. Tomorrow, Good Friday, Pastor Romeo, I want you to bring. Pastor Romeo, do you want God to show you that you are rich? You were not here. Uh, he was not here. He was not here. So when I asked him, do you want God to show you that? He said yes. <laughs> do you want God to show you that you have more me? I am going to ask you something for something. When you say no, I have one thing to say to you, and that is thank you. Yeah. Amen. All I have is to say is 
Thank you. One day, there was a guy. When this war case came, he was an NDC organizer, youth organizer. And he, he, he goes to action. He told me, he said, when this case reaches somewhere, he was a Christian, he said, when this case reaches somewhere, I have to choose between my job and this church thing. So when the, the case reached that place, he chose the job and left us. So they came to break down the wall. So I told Archbishop, I said, you see that boy in your church, that guy, tell him that I said thank you. And he told, Bishop Nick told me, I will not deliver that message. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me ah, a red basket. Hallelujah. Amen. As for me, all I will say is thank you. If you give, if you don't give, all I have to do is to say thank you. Amen. I need 700 million to buy rupees. You see my work? Don't pity me. This is my work. My work is to be nothing before you and to do my work. And I sit down. That's all. You to do your part and be quiet. Amen. Now I need millions. Some of you to give 10 million. Yeah. Some of you to give five million. Tomorrow is Good Friday. Yeah. And some of you to give one million. Amen. Amen. Ah, why am I holding a basket? I need envelopes. Amen. Amen. And I want hundreds. And if you know you can give hundred million, just give it. This one. When I'm when I'm standing under the anointing, I tell them. You, you, as if I'm not, I don't have. You see, when I don't have anointing for certain, sometimes somebody says, Pray for me. I say, You are blessed. I just say, You are blessed. Some people say, Lay hands on me. I say, Go home, go home. There's no anointing. But when I'm operating under the anointing, what I'm saying, you just be careful. Those are the times you shouldn't say anything. Oh, this guy, this, this, this guy. So I want people to give me money until we have even one billion. Uh, we need to start giving cars. Here is a car, sell it, whatever you get. Here is land, take it. I cannot. And some of you will die with your things. Uh, it will not have any use. Give to the Lord. If you give, I'll say thank you. If you don't give, I'll also say thank you. Paul. Brighter. Okay. I want some people to give 10 million and 5 million. Uh, if you will give, come for my envelope. 10 million, 5 million. Come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ten million, five million. Please come. Oh, clap for them. If you are not coming, at least you clap. <laughs> God bless you. For our roof, we are, we are aiming for 700. Now, don't let it become a tug of war. There are more than 20 people you are part of this 10 million, 5 million, 10 million, 5. Don't let God show you that you have money or that you have 5 million or 10 million. That's all I'm saying. Ten million, five million. Okay. I'm counting up to ten. 
By the time I count 10, a chance is gone. I'm leading you. I'm leading you somewhere. When you're supposed to give 10 million, 5 million, you give 1 million. It's like something. Anybody else? You are thinking. Touch the person next to you. Tell the person. Brother. Advice. Give the person just advice. Advice. Good advice. Okay, have you finished advising the person? Okay. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Last man. Who is taking this envelope? All right. Everything that has been squeezed in your life, God is opening it to bless you. God bless you. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Uh, when I went to Sakumono to raise funds for their roof, Kwesi, how many people gave 10 million? About 12 people, 10 million cities in Sakumono branch. So, at the headquarters, you have disgraced yourself severely. Severely. Because in Sakumono Church, about 12 people came rushing. Thirteen, they were thirteen. Huh? Yeah, it was 13. And here, just about four. Even that one, I said 10 and 5. Okay. So you are blessed. Now, I want a lot of people to give 1 million for our church building. I know you have given. doesn't matter. Give again. Amen. When God blesses you, sometimes he blesses you again. Come for. One million cities. Oh, this one, I shouldn't struggle. I should, outside, outside. We shouldn't struggle over this. God bless you. Tomorrow is Good Friday. One million cities. Oh. Randy. I thought that I would need help. Oh, clap for, if you will come, at least, you clap for them. Give to somebody. Give to somebody. Give to somebody. One million. One million. One million. When I went to Sakumono, More two. Okay. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Give us some music. Huh? Thank you. Uh, when will you bring it? Tomorrow? If you cannot bring it tomorrow, bring it on Sunday. About how many people have come? God bless you. Have I got 100 people? About 20 people, you see, or 30 people. 16. Okay. Oh, come. Hey. Wonderful. Welcome to life. Has anybody come from the choir? You see, many of you are operating by what you think you have. But God is asking you to do something and sacrifice. And you are not doing it. I cannot lie to you. 
you are not doing it and you will not get into a certain level to a certain realm my envelope come believe God believe God today force I'm at a force All right. Now, tomorrow we are going to receive all this. We are talking about the ultimate sacrifice. Nobody should feel that he doesn't have money. Paul, is somebody cooking rice somewhere? Huh? Am I smelling something? Huh? I was wondering what was happening. In fact, when we go to Kaneshi, we will miss this particular lady. Maybe we should transfer her. <laughs> Hold it. Okay, if you can't give one million, but you can give 500,000, I need you to also come and take my envelope. We are talking about big monies now. Come, please. Oh! Don't let me beg you. You are disgracing yourself. Five hundred thousand. God bless you. God bless you. We have time. We have time. We have patience for you to wait. Five hundred thousand. Believe God. God bless you. Five hundred thousand as a seed for your church. Please follow me and let's go into the promised land.